Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to pop some new bearings in this three-quarter horsepower swamp cooler motor. The plans for this is it's going to be the brake. It's going to be a dyno brake for a tabletop dyno I'm building in order to test that little uh, steam engine that's made out of the air conditioning compressor off of a car. So I need a way of quantifying that engine and other things I'm going to build. So I need a tabletop dyno. So this is going to be the dyno brake for that, but first we've got to rebuild it because it sounds like this. This is a very simple process. All I'm doing is taking the motor apart, taking out, pressing out the old bearings. I got to machine the housing so it'll fit the new bearings because they're a larger diameter and then putting it all back together. So that's all we're going to do here. And, uh, like I say, simple, there's nothing even remotely complicated about this. And if you've never been into one of these though, there's a couple little points, a couple little tips that might make it easier. Anyway, and so let's get this bad boy part so we can uh, replace these bearings. Ah, there's a ring in there. All right, so there's the armature, or often called the rotor. There's the stator. There's our other bearing down at the bottom. We'll pop that off here in just a second. But pressing that one out and pressing it in is the same as pressing this one out and pressing this one in. So let's head over to the press. We'll knock out this bearing. We'll get it up on the, the end bell up on the lathe. Bore out the bore so it'll fit the new bearing. Press in the new bearing and then we're done. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I should point out getting these in, getting these motor mounts off is pretty easy. We have to take out this little pressed in disc in order to be able to get the bearing out. And getting those off is a piece of cake. Just a little le uh, block to use as a fulcrum. Mine has this nifty little divot in it that is actually, I didn't do it on purpose, it's just from another operation. Anyway, these just pop right out, boom, like that. There's your old bearing, there's your old felt. Your felt is all soaked with oil. This pops off. And we'll put it on a lathe, bore out this bore, well, press out this bearing, bore out the bore, press in the new bearing. And then we'll put new cotton into it. Actually, this is already new cotton, but either way. And uh, then it'll be done. So, off we go to the press. Okay, folks, here we are set up over on the press. Here's our motor end bell with our bearing that's got to come out. I love using, if you've never done this, I love using these old bearing uh, inner races and the outer races often work too for pressing out other bearings when you do a bunch of bearing work hang on to a few of these because they make fantastic little spacers for when you got to press out a bearing on a press this is a cheesy little harbor freight press do not ever buy one of these they are absolute junk maybe someday i will actually do a few videos on how to improve it but I haven't done that yet. In fact, this one is not working because I called it junk. Ah, there it goes. It hasn't been used in a while, so I can understand it feeling neglected. You never give me any love. You never touch me anymore. All right, here we go. Oh, not quite. Getting that lined up kind of properly is kind of important. All right, here we go. All right, there it goes. It's gonna drop out the bottom here in just a second. And hopefully I don't hit the camera with the handle. <laughs> okay, there it went. All right, all right. Oh, don't drop everything. All right, let's see. There's the old bearing. In all of its glory. I wonder if that'll focus any closer. Not a lot, huh? What if I do this? Ooh, there it is. There's the old bearing. You can see on the inside edge, right there, where it's all wiped out, because the motor was installed with the belt pulling the shaft toward that window. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so now we got to get this up on the lathe, bore this hole out so it can fit the new bearing, which looks like, hang on a second, let me find it. The new bearing looks like th this. 
we're putting an oil light bearing in where a solid bearing came out. It'll work great. It doesn't have the window on the side. The oil will just soak right through the bearing because the bearing is made out of porous bronze particles that are all smashed together. And there's 30 weight oil in the interstitial spaces between the particles. And so it'll make a much better bearing than what was in there. But next we gotta go to the lathe. Okay guys, set up on the lathe, getting ready to bore this. Actually, I've bored it a little bit already just to clean it up. But if you've seen anybody use a lathe, you're familiar with what this is gonna be like. I don't know how this audio is going to do with the actually running the lathe. Let's see what happens. All right, there it is. We're going to take about a 10 thou cut. Yeah, you don't need to see my face. Because, God, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. All right, let's see here. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now with this, if I try and come back out on a spring cut, it chatters, which is why I didn't do a spring cut on the way back for those of you that are wondering why I did it that way. All right, God, look at that. That machined out really nice. And it should still have about five to go, actually about five and a half to go. Unfortunately, I am tethered to the camera with the microphone cord. So I don't think I can get in there and actually mic that. Okay, hang on a second, guys. Oh, here's my cat. Hello, cat. Okay, guys, I gotta show you this. This is my cat. This is magic. Yeah. She's super gentle when she does that. She's really not trying to hurt me. Although she's a little irritated. She doesn't like being on camera yet. I don't know why. But either way, <laughs> while I was boring that piece over there, she's sitting right here. She's always got to be part of everything I'm doing out here. She never leaves my side pretty much. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so her name's Magic. If you see her in future videos, it's because she's always part of my world. And uh, she's part of this video because that's where she wants to be while I'm running the lathe. I wish I could get her to wear a set of safety glasses because I really do worry about like metal getting in her eyes and stuff. But uh, she was all lovey-dovey a minute ago. Now she's getting rammy. Yeah, you're getting rammy. Hey, knock it off. That hurts. I don't hurt you. At least I try not to. Except when I step on you by accident. Yeah. So, so you ready to take a finish cut? Huh? Oh, I guess I should introduce the lathe. Yep, there it is. Old Atlas 10-inch lathe. Absolutely nothing special about it except for the fact that I love it because it lets me do cool things. <laughs> Anyway, so we got a lathe, ooh, and we got a cat. All right, we're back from the lathe. This hole has been bored out to 20 millimeter OD. Before it was a little less than that, but 20 millimeter OD is the diameter of the new bearing. So in the future, when I want to rebuild this motor, I can just press this bearing out and press in a new one. I don't have to do any machining, so that's pretty cool. And let's get a little motion lotion on here. Help this little guy go back in that bore properly. And as you can probably guess, installation is the opposite of removal. I give the Harbor Freight Press a lot of crap because it's like this. It's very easy to mess things up with it because it doesn't actually guide the ram at all. But I have to admit, it is handy to have. 
And of course, if you want to attempt this repair yourself and you don't have a press, this can certainly be done with a hammer and a drift. It doesn't have to be done with a press. I have the press and so I'll go ahead and use the press, but like I say, I've done these with a hammer and a drift and it works just fine. Only problem is it's easy to ding up the bearing and then the shaft won't fit in it. All right, there we go. Well, one brand new bearing popped in there. All right, now the fun part. Let's, let's see if it still goes on the shaft. It does, oh, look at that, isn't that pretty? Awesome. That would work better if I had that like that. There, look at that, isn't that pretty? I'll have to cut out that other part. Or maybe I won't, I don't know, it's up to me, we'll see. Okay, there we go. Now I gotta do the other side, which is exactly like this side, so there's no reason to, sew, to show it twice. All right, let's put this little guy back together and run it and show you that it actually works. Fingers crossed, it'll actually work. Anyway, I already put, just uh, for brevity, I put the other end back together already. There's no reason to show that twice because it's the same as this end here, pretty much. So here we got our, our rotor a little love juice on there and gently gently come on little guy there you go oh that's the love right there a little bit on this side okay one thing i neglected to mention earlier is that if you look here you can see that these the stator has these holes that the bolts have to go through okay and of course those have to line up with these holes so before you take one of these apart, which I'm assuming you'll watch this whole video before you run out and take one of these apart, what I like to do is make some alignment marks. So here are my alignment marks. There's two on one end and just one on the other. That way I don't mix up the ends. You can't mix up the ends anyway because the electrical connections are on one end. But anyway, I do it that way anyway. So anyway, so here we go. We've got two marks. Those have to line up in order for this whole thing to go together properly. And by doing it that way, when you go to put your bolts through, well, they all line up nice, neat, and pretty. So we just need a little whack in here. All right. Drop in some voltage. One of the bolts broke coming apart. That's why I only have three bolts, but I'll put another one in it. Of course, actually, this is going to get used as the dyno brake uh, part of the dynamometer, so... Chances are it's going to have these bolts are going to be changed or messed with, or it's not going to be the same as the way it was. That's fine. All right. Let's get a little tension on these. So I'm going to do this without knocking over the tripod. I think I did it. Oh, come here, don't. <laughs> it's going to run inside. No. Okay. probably tight enough. These don't need a lot. It's a little tiny bolt. Yes, I know I'm using a drill instead of a impact driver, but I'm careful with it. <laughs> I got the tripod. Don't worry, it'll stop oscillating here in a second. All right, let's put some juice to this bad boy. Oh god, that feels perfect. That feels perfect. There's not even any in play. It probably should be a little in play, but I can't. Yeah, I guess there's a little bit there. All right, let's hook this thing up and see if she works. More importantly, see if she sounds crappy like she did before. All right, there we go. Yes, I'm going to negate the ground for right now. In the interest of brevity, expediency, all that cool stuff. Oh, yeah, that needs to go on that end. You'll notice we turned down the ends here so that we can put bearings on, but that's all part. I'll explain all that in the dyno video. So, let's see if she runs. Oh, look at that. It sounds so happy. There we go. All right. Wasn't that easy? Of course, you do have to have a lathe. And so, if you're a prepper, get a lathe. Or if you're going to be part of a prepper group, <laughs> make sure somebody in your group has a lathe because everything in our world runs on machines 
and I don't think people put enough stock in that because the truth is everything in this world is is mechanical at this point and so unfortunately if, if unless you're going to be down to camping in the woods with your hatchet and your muzzle loader and your hunting dog i'm not saying that's a bad thing i like muzzle loaders and hunting dogs and all that stuff but if you're going to have anything above the sophisticated level of a campfire, you're going to need a machinist. He's going to need his machines so he can make machines that do work for us. Oh, God, it sounds so good. Doesn't it sound so good? It sounds brand new. All right. It's got a lot of gyroscopic action, too, if I flip it around like this. Okay, guys, that's it. That is it. The next video will be the building the dynamometer and possibly I might get the first run on the steam engine run on the dynamometer but probably it'll just be building the dynamometer so check in for that that'll be the video coming up right after this one see you next time take care